My dear, sweet, innocent, and yet succulent peasants, there comes a time in every warrior's life when he finds himself in great need of having to paint a candle still life. You are not yet a man until you have painted his skull basking in the glorious flames of a candle your mom bought you most likely from Bed Bath & Beyond. Now this painting was live streamed on Twitch to literally billions of viewers. I start this still life like I start every painting I effortlessly produce with an explosion of glorious brushwork denoting the basic blocking of the overall painting setup you see before your fat face. Striking, you say to yourself. Yes, my dear peasants. And if you wish to know more about the setup, I am linking a video I just made on the setup process where you will learn much in the ways of setting up a still life. I'm using a mixture of ivory black and cadmium red deep to hatch the basic shapes in while I use a Viva paper towel to erase the marks I deem unworthy of my inevitable masterpiece. Always start simple, my dear idiots. If you detail in the initial phase, you will most likely have to undo the work later on when you realize your shapes are incorrect. After I believe the blocking is in the ballpark, I proceed to correct the overall shapes using light and dark values with color. I have plenty of videos explaining the painting process, and though I will skim through the process for this masterpiece, I want to impress upon you a particular lesson that bears repeating, and I want you to watch every expertly placed brushstroke I gift to you in this video, keeping this lesson in mind. And that lesson is, no matter what stage of the work you are in, whether it be the blackened stage, the adding of color stage, king of value stage or the refining stage, always do so with the ultimate goal of fixing the large shapes. You see, when you detail, you should be squinting down and flashing your eyes back and forth to see the subtle indiscrepancies. Never separate your eye from the larger shape, otherwise you will detail out of it being correct. Every mark you see me make, even if it is to bring the light up in a certain area, is for the larger shape and effect. To achieve this, one must always try to see everything at once. This is just one of the reasons why artist brains are larger than everybody else's on this wretched planet. My dear buttholes, always remember to organize the colors on your palette. If you wish to further understand the mixing process of this painting, I created a separate video which I am linking above. There, I explained everything on how to mix your colors. Oh! my genius, I painted the light glow of the candle, which in turn lost the form of the pumpkins and the leaves. When staring at a light in a dark room, you will notice an aura around the light that blurs and obscures the edges of everything behind it. In this case, the pumpkins and the leaves are partially melded into the light of the candle. In painting, we have the ability to paint the atmosphere and fade out form. Hence, I faded the form of the leaves and the pumpkins where the light was which created a beautiful atmospheric effect. The goal was to keep strong, transparent darks with a tinge of deep red to produce a glow effect. It is important to note that there is no straight white or black in this piece. Even the deep black I used has some alizarin crimson to enliven the shadows. I painted the candles on the left using only cadmium yellow and alizarin crimson. These colors were perfect for creating the rich color of the candle that also enabled the light value to remain high. I contrasted this by putting a strong mixture of alizarin crimson into my deep, dark, and sexy ivory black, and I painted it next to the candle. I also spent much time on the edges and tried to push the chroma level to an extreme. Chroma is essentially the color intensity. I found that using alizarin crimson for the transitional edges of the candles on the right did a good job of pushing the color while keeping the shadows transparent. 
For the candle on the right, I lowered the color intensity by adding a subtle mixture of ivory black, yellow ochre, and cadmium red. This helped offset the intense colors. From there, I made sure the drawing and transitional edges and the light and dark values were accurate. Bitch. Throughout the entire painting, I slowly corrected the anatomy of the skull while bringing up the light value in relation to the entire piece. I wanted to leave some visible brush strokes, especially on the forehead, to differentiate the very subtle planes. Unlike a painting of a skull in natural light, the value range in this candlelight setup was more compressed on the skull, more warm and orange. The painting itself as a whole used the entire spectrum of values ranging from light to dark. But the lights and darks on the skull and other objects had to be compressed to achieve the candlelight effect. Always keep a fresh eye. If you find yourself having trouble seeing the proportions after a while, take your painting, flip it, and your tiny brain should pick up on things you otherwise might have missed. Our dear peasants, you see, once I come up with an idea, I spend a lot of time randomly throughout the course of the day visualizing what I want to accomplish and how I want to feel once the project is complete. I'm thinking about how I want it painted and how I'm technically going to achieve it. I think about other paintings that people have done, how bad they suck, and try to come up with a direction. Once I know how I want the painting to look, I think and research how I can achieve it technically. I also get into a finish it mentality. I'm not talking about rushing. In this line of work, it is common to spend a lot of time on a piece. This is a good thing, but we can also procrastinate because of it. I found that when I adopt this finish it mentality, I work quicker and more efficiently because I'm painting with confidence and I can complete the work faster. Take time to mentally prepare yourself. Do not simply jump into the painting because you want to paint and express yourself. Always spend time thinking about your work and analyzing what you have done during breaks. Oftentimes during this painting, I would take a quick break and realize I was painting in circles because I was not painting to finish it. Again, I don't mean that you should rush your work, but when you push yourself to complete something, you will find that your brain will naturally seek ways to complete it without cutting corners if you are also striving to maintain proper technique. My great wisdom and superior intellect, I have found that to create a solid sense of light, one must properly balance the use of color and light value. The candle flame itself is not straight white. I used only a smidgen of cadmium red and cadmium yellow with cremnets white for the actual white part of the flame. The edges are mostly cadmium yellow and alizarin crimson in varying degrees. The further out from the flame, the more alizarin crimson I put in until it fades into the deep ivory black I ground myself. I was not going to at first, but I ended up painting in the folds of the foreground because I thought it added to the mood of the piece. I used a simple mixture of ivory black, cadmium red, and alizarin crimson to achieve the warm glow effect. I made sure to squint so as to keep the values in check and not make them too bright unlike your brain, which would kill the light effect. The painting still had a lot of space up top, which I liked, but after talking to one of my idiot friends, whose name I will not mention here, Terry Simpson, I concluded that it would be nice to paint the subtle folds I saw from the candlelight in. With that, another effortless masterpiece was exploded into existence to be fought over by all the major galleries and hot women of the world. Once again, I have proven my intellectual dominance over the lesser peon moron buttholes. And I live stream on Twitch where I have a harem of hot women. What? <gasps>